Well, I have a tool that I wanted to show you guys that I've been using a lot of. Now, the reason why I brought this up is somebody commented on my one of my videos on YouTube and I promised them that I would do a follow up on this a bit late, but I've been busy. I've been training for my fiber course and trying to memorize this color code that I still have not done. I want to show you guys a good feature and the reason why I use and recommend this unit right here. It's digital. Now, most tone kits that you use for toning cables or phone jacks will do analog and they do really well. There's a lot of products out there. Many people make them, but this one stands out the most because it's affordable. It does digital. And I mean, the reason why we want to do digital is because if we plug the normal or other branded units into a active switch, it shuts the switch down or causes issues or it doesn't tone properly because it claims as a dead short. When you use this device, when you're out surfing in buildings and you don't know if the cable goes to the switch or goes to another product like a printer or a computer, but you're trying to find it because you don't know where it is, this device, you could put it into digital mode and it will tone if it is plugged into an active computer or a switch. So in today's quick little video, I'm going to go over a couple specs because I did do an unboxing of this video and I'm going to show you what it's like when you plug it into an active switch in digital mode and it works. Now, it's not a hard tool to use. It's not an expensive tool to use, but it is a very effective, good tool for anybody that has to do toning and finding cables. Today, I'm just going to show you what plugged into a switch actively and working. It does test cables too, and it does shielded cables. It's just a very basic test, but it will test and work for you. Some of the features, obviously it does digital and analog, and it has these alligator clips that you can clip onto a basic cable if you can't, or if it's not been toned, like there's no ends on it, it will do just that. Strip off maybe the brown pair or whatever pair you want, clip these on, turn it on, and it works. I'm not really going to show that right now because I don't have a cable that's bare, but it does work just great because I did it today. So a couple things to note. It does say digital right on the front. Digital tone and probe kit. Yeah. Inside the kit, we get the tone generator, the generator leads, which are these, if they want to call it. I call them alligator clips with some banana jacks that are protected on the inside, uh, the pro, which is this, and the pouch. And I did the unboxing video for this, but it comes with all the batteries. And I've had this for about two years and they're still fresh. So it doesn't need batteries. Um, there are many other kits like this that look very similar. Make sure you get the right one. This one is the, I don't know if it says on the paper here. No, it actually says it on this device. The VDV, 500-163, this is the digital part, and this part is the VDV 500-223, hard to see these small numbers, and it says probe digital, and now on the bottom of this one it says toner digital. There are other ones that just do analog. I mean, if you're doing just analog, that's fine for phones maybe, but if you're going to spend, I think it was like $25 more to get the digital version, to have all the bells and whistles and to do both, well worth it. The very first thing that they highlight in this, trace cables on an active network. Very, 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 very useful. Like I said, into a computer, to a printer or some other device, uh, even a PoE switch like this one, even a PoE switch, it will still work and not cause any issues on this. So I'm gonna show you here. So first thing we do is turn it on. It turns on into digital mode and I'll take a picture of this and show you guys. It goes default into digital mode. You can change it from digital to analog and it's very loud. So if I was to turn this on, Right now, it's in digital mode. As you can tell, it's lit up blue right there. This piece right here is lit up blue because that means it's in digital mode. And on here, there's a digital mode. And it's kind of cool how they do this. They go 010, 
for digital and on here is 010 digital, right? So if I was to turn this up, I think, you can hear that digital tone. That's a digital tone. Now, here's the funny part. I could plug this cable in to this, my favorite PoE switch that is still living and plug it in here. Notice when I plug this in, nothing changes. Well, this is changing because it's detecting that cable, but it's actually not shorting out and doing anything. Now it's in PoE mode because this is a PoE switch. I could still find that cable. Now, I'm sorry, it's loud. Turn it down just a little bit. If I turn this to non-digital mode, you hear the noise? It's making a tone, but it's not the right tone, right? We go in here, we can hear all the noise because we're in analog mode on this cable. But digital mode is what we want to use. Now, if we keep it back in the digital mode, there's no noise. But if I plug this back in, this thing's going to make lots of noise again, as we can see. So we're on an active network and not having any issues, and we can play it. It works very, very, very well. I wanted to show you guys that because somebody asked me how well that works. And I think these ends come out too. Oh yeah, you can change the ends on these just in case you drop this and it busts off. Happens. Now, also, some people will not go out and buy... Hold on, let's turn this off. Some people will go out and say, well, I want to test network cables too. This will do very basic network cable testing. I have a shielded Cat6 cable that I made two years ago from True Cable. That's right, they sent me the ends for this. You could test cables with this by plugging this in. Of course, it's gonna be upside down. And it will show you if you've made your cable, very basic test, very basic, it's just a continuity test, if you made your cable properly. So we can turn it on. Once we turn it on, it's a very basic test and I'll show you here. It's probably gonna be upside down and I'm sorry because of the way the cable is, it's, it's coiled up. As you can tell, it does shielded too. One to eight, right? And shielded, that's why it goes all the way down to the ninth one because they're shielding on there and they're all passing. Pretty simple. This does work very well on long cables too, just in case, because somebody did say, hey, will it work on a long cable? Yes, because it's just a continuity. It's just a light to say, hey, I got power. There's a short, lights up the light. We're good to go. Very easy. It also has a headphone jack that you can plug headphones in. If you were in a really loud room, like a networking closet or something, where there's lots of servers and stuff like that, you could plug in headphones into this, so that way you can look for the cables and not be drowned out by machines or something like that in that room. Kind of a cool idea. Hopefully it's not too loud, but I've always just used the speaker. So pretty easy, right? Nothing hard about this at all. And I will show you in analog mode, take this out of analog mode. You hear the noise. You can change that tone, by the way, also. You can take these, right? Let me turn this down because it's pretty, pretty loud. Pretty good for doing phones and stuff like that, or if you're actually trying to find out which one of these cables is yours and you know it's not in an active switch, just clip it onto a pair of cables. I usually use orange and blue, just twist them together, and it works. You find the cable. Very easy to use. Hopefully, whoever commented on my video watches this and goes, oh, that's awesome, thanks very much. Handy, handy tool, doesn't wear out batteries, and um, I'm gonna have to say, they are built to last meaning they're rugged. They're not really thin plastic. Like if you drop this on the ground, don't quote me on that because you don't want to drop your tools, keep them safe. But if you dropped it, it's not going to smash into a million little pieces. So when they were designing this, they said, let's put some thicker plastic on that and some rubber grips so that way people don't drop it. Right? Okay. Simple video. Hopefully someone found this helpful. Yeah. Like, subscribe, whatever you want to say. If you have any questions or uh, like that, Emails down below and we'll go from there. Have a good day.